Welcome to mp3travelclub.com's 12th video in our series of managing your photographs with Picasa. This one is about some useful features that don't fit into anything else. So what we're going to talk about today is contact sheets, uh, how to resize your photographs, collages, ordering prints online, and printing your own photos. Let's start with contact sheets. Here we have a folder, so we'll select folder, print contact sheet and this has provided us with a series of thumbnails uh, first choice we have is whether we want uh, you know some tiny or large thumbnails uh, and we can shrink that folder to fit in one page or we can crop photographs to make sure they all fit we can select border and text options in this case it's only a question of whether I'm allowed uh, captions or not I've selected them on uh, and then we can decide whether we're going to print it to a PDF folder or a file or a printer. Uh, and um, we can also uh, increase the number of uh, photographs that we have. A uh, contact sheet can be useful if you want to just uh, get some friends to order some prints from you uh, or uh, you know just circulate them around a family after a, you know, some big event or something. So once you've selected made all those selections, you, either pr you can print. I'm going to cancel because I don't want lots of, uh, of that. Now sometimes it's uh, rather more fun to have a, uh, an informal uh, photo collage and uh, that's a nice facility that Picasso provides. Here we go, we've got um, things which look like a pile of pictures thrown on the ground. We can have a mosaic where they're all neatly lined up. We could have a frame mosaic, so you put one in the middle which is it chooses randomly it seems. Um, you can put them in a grid, that means they get cropped and messed around. The contact sheet can come from here as well, that's uh, different uh, to the other option. Um, and finally there's the multiple exposure, and if you're going to put more than two or three in there, I think that just sort of leads to a, a sort of grey mush. So I'm not very keen on that, I like the picture pile, so we're going to go with that. Now we can use another image, one of the images as a, as a background. Um, Maybe it works, maybe it's a solid colour, and I've picked orange because you know that's the colour of the Dutch. Okay, the page format, we can vary the sizes to, to fit to paper, um, and you can see how everything moved around there, um, and we can have a portrait or landscape view. Okay, right, and if you want to, you can add the captions. I've only got two or three captions amongst these photographs, so I don't think they'll show up very clearly. All right. Now, you then want to create a collage. Uh, create a collage, and uh, you've then got one JPEG file, picture, etc., which uh, is now being created. And let's come back and we can edit the collage when it's finished if we wish. Same again, change colours and uh, when we're happy. Oh, well, so we can scramble the collage again so it's produced a different outlook. We can shuffle the pictures. Alright, so there we go. Uh, and um, finally we can close. Save the changes. And here we are, we now have a folder of collages. And that's, that's, uh, and now that was a draft, let's create the proper thing. And you can now use that image as, I don't know, something for a blog post or uh, perhaps as a background for your desktop or whatever. There are three ways to resize photographs uh, using Picasso. The first way is to use the export function. So here I've selected a number of photographs. You can see them in the photo tray here. I export them to a new folder. I'll call it resize. Uh, you can resize it according to with this slider uh, and make it pretty small if you want. Um, I'll make it just a little bit smaller. Then you can change the image quality. Normal is as it is, maximum is the most detailed it can be, minimum is the smallest file, custom is something in between, once you've selected that. Adding a watermark is quite a fun thing to do, you could add maybe a little copyright notice or something, um, or 
you could put draft across it or whatever you wanted to do maybe write your name and then you simply export and you'll find the photographs are smaller and they're in that new folder I'm going to cancel that uh, and we'll move on to the next uh, sizing technique the next method I want to show you is during upload uh, once you've got a web app uh, albums account uh, when you have uploaded an album when you upload an album to the web uh, you're asked wh what size do you want to upload and of course it's nice for people to see good clear pictures so good Picasso's recommending 1600 pixels but if you want to put it on a blog or a web page maybe 640 pixels is better because uh, that will load faster and people will stick around for your website um, visibility you can do complete privacy public on the web or anyone with the link okay and you can share this with other people and that means emailing them to say it's there have a look but we'll see that later um, and then this tells you how much space you have in that account uh, and you simply click on upload having chosen the file I'm going to cancel that and we'll move on to the next method which is what happens when you email your f photographs to somebody and you can actually resize during the process of emailing your photographs to people uh, you have a look at uh, having selected your photographs go to tools options select the email tab and you have various selections here including the size for multiple pictures 640 pixels and indeed for a single picture if you're just going to send the one it'll go out still go out of that uh, and uh, or you could select the original size but they'll tend to be rather bigger and some people's email accounts won't accept such big photographs so maybe it's better to keep it small All right um, and if you're using Outlook then it might go as an attachment or actually in the uh, in the email itself um, once you've selected those and got the size as you wanted you can click on OK and then you go into the sending as an email uh, which I'll show you in a later video. Now, because it provides us with two ways of getting hard copies, uh, the first one is the low hassle method. Oops, uh, I've lost control of that. Uh, here is the Mallorca folder. I have s selected a few photographs that I'd like hard copies of, and you can see them selected in this folder the blue edges around it. And I decided I'd like to get some prints done uh, so I go to shop here I click here and then I need to select the country and in my case it's United Kingdom but it could be anywhere really uh, and you then click on your provider um, and that's by clicking on this choose and you've got all sorts of pricing information and things that you can set up here um, so, um, and when you've chosen them, and I won't work through one because they're all the same. Uh, they're all, they're all different, rather. Um, and you go um, back to Picasso, and that's how you can order some prints. And if you want to print your own photographs, there they are in the photo tray again. You can print them on full size of paper with no border, a bit of border two on my page, four on a page, or less, all right? You can deal with borders and captions, change the text color, do sorts of things like that, and then you select the printer that you want to send it to. Oops, you're, you're okay, okay at first. And then, yes, as I said, you can select the printer. And then you print. Alright, there's one more thing I'm going to show you before we get into the sharing photographs bit um, that's left on the bottom here of this thing and uh, it's about showing videos. So we'll do that in the next video in our series. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like it, share it, comment on it uh, and uh, share, share the good word with the world. Um, but look forward to seeing you in the, uh, the next video which will be about making movies from your videos.